Well, uh, Red Hot Mama. Actually, the title is Fine Little Mama. Uh, Elmo James song. I always liked it. It's a sexy song and uh, fun. You know, it's, it, was an, it was enjoyable to play. And I, I think there's a recording of it on a Fleetwood Mac live at Boston, one of those bootlegs that appear everywhere. <laughs>
we met That's the day I knew you were my pet Well, I want to tell you Apron strings, old cliff, cliff number. And I just the other day heard the original version by on a Sun unre, unissued, previously unissued, uh, by this guy called Curtis Holback. And it was very interesting to hear it. Um, and it seemed like with the Cliff Richard version, he took some, I don't know if he did, the songwriter took some liberties and actually improved it. I think so, really, you know, may in listening to the two together, I think still think Cliff and the Drifters had the edge on, on that particular song. I always liked it. You know, it was a fun one for me to do my Cliff, Cliff imitation in, in front of the mirror. I had my hair, when I had hair, I had it come back I just I just wanted to be Cliff Richard and <laughs> I was about 10 years old 11 years old so anyway that's a that's a fun song to to do one two three <laughs> it's good to be free I like a wonder and breathe to cut my go Never I but honey, love has clipped my wings. I want to be da 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 deep and strong. I kiss you good night, and what do I do? Hurry on home to dream about you. It's crazy, I know, just one of those things. I want to be da 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 to your apron string. Well, you hold my hand and I burn like a fire. You kiss my lips and the flame goes high. It's such a lucky battle to finally lay like you. I cross my heart and I tell you no lies. So hold me real close. Close your eyes. I stick the real close like Ivy the Cleans. I just want to be tied to the apron string. I burn like a fire You kiss my lips and the flame goes high Such a lucky fella to find a little in my life I cross my heart And I tell you no lies So hold me real close Close your eyes I stick her real close Like I be the cleans I want to be Deep and strong I just want to be tied to your apron string. I just want to be tied to your apron string. The inspiration for You Don't Have to Be Black to Be Blue came from <laughs> it's a funny situation because uh, we did the when I was in Fleetwood Mac, we did uh, a Chicago blues session with some of the old greats. And um, I'd heard a little, there was a little bit of, uh, not with every one of them, I, I'm going to be very careful here. Um, 
not with all the the the, the guys involved, the the guys from Chicago, the all black guys, um, but there was a little bit of mm, who were these little whiteies coming in, doing our music, um, a little bit of sort of discrimination in reverse, <laughs> but you know that, no, it it. It smoothed over after a while, but it was that basic. And I, in a way, I don't blame them. And we always felt a little bit, well, now what are we doing, you know, coming in here? And of course, I got to play with uh, J.T. Brown, who was the saxophone player for Elmore James, and about nine months before he died, actually. So that was a very um, special time for me. He was a very, very, very sweet guy, very um, appreciative. And he's looking at me with, like, you know, this little whitey from the north of England or somewhere over there doing the stuff that he had been playing for years with Elmore. So, but it, it, it triggered off an idea to me that, well, if you got the blues, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to be black to be blue. Now, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to do the blues any better. I'm not saying that. And, of course, they, when it comes down to it, I guess in my, what I listen to now, I still listen to Little Otis Rush and the old B.B. King and all that, and it, they do in many ways have the edge, I think, on us whiteies. But that's not the point of the song. The point of the song is, well, you don't have to be black to be blue. Well, some people say I'm just a little whitey. How can I profess to play and sing the blues? And they quote me that tried and proven adage that to play the blues, you gotta pay your dues. Well, in that case, colors shouldn't make a difference. We all shed the same kind of teardrops when we cry. And we've all got that same colored heart beating within us as every honest-to-goodness surgeon can testify. Well, I'm convinced from experience that feeling from within has absolutely nothing to do with the color of your skin. Be you red, white, yellow, brown, or black, whatever shade of hue, you don't have to be black to be blue. said now listen don't you worry and by the way it's black as black can be he said you just keep playing that sweet loving blues doing what comes naturally because i'm convinced from experience that feeling from within has absolutely nothing to do with the color of your skin be you red white yellow brown or black whatever shade of hue you don't have to be black to be blue Thank mm -hmm. you. 
That feeling from within has absolutely nothing to do with the color of your skin. Be you red, white, yellow, brown, or black, whatever shade of hue. You don't have to be black. You don't have to be black to be blue. A little instrumental right there. That's uh, the thing I was fingering around um, a while ago called Many Sparrows. It's taken from, from one of Jesus' words. He said, we are much more, we're worth much more than many sparrows. So don't, you know, if one of the sparrows falls, God knows about it. How much more important are you? Sorry, environmentalists. That's what he said. <laughs> but... Uh, um, so that's why I got the little bird sounds. Ding, ding, dong, ding, dong, dong. And, uh, uh, and you, the thing about it was I was experimenting with using my dropping a pick again because what gave me a new lease of, on life on playing the slide was not, was dropping the pick entirely when I played. Uh, Bef when I first started, I would pick the notes, and then there was a lot of extra harmonics um, coming in because the other strings weren't dampened. Uh, this is a little 
it's like guitar class, <laughs> but when when dropping the pick, I was able to strike the note and then dampen the other strings which weren't involved in that note. <laughs> so it's like, shut up. You know, just dink, you know, dink, and then dink, dink. You'll, you'll probably see because I'm sure they got some shots of the, the idea. And I'm sure a lot of guitarists watching know exactly what I mean. Uh, so f learning to drop the pick really gave me a whole new thing for playing the slide guitar. And so I, it's like discovery because I was listening to a lot of the old stuff and I could hear this harmonic, the other ringing notes and I go, ah, oh, <laughs> go away, you know, <laughs> I wanted to hear the note nice and clean. Um, so it was a discovery, but uh, I'd, I'd learned, heard that Albert King and some of the blues guys that you didn't use a pick and that's how sometimes they would get that sort of little almost different tones from every note they picked. Whereas with a pick, it's, you either lighten up or you tap bear down heavy, but with the fingers, there's always a difference with every note. And um, the thumb gives this little dead note, and it just gives you, it opened up a whole thing, and I got very much, much more excited about playing slide, but I haven't, had not only touched it for years, just doing little licks here and there on a recording, but not, you know, not developing it. And then when I heard uh, Mark Knopfler in the late 70s from Dire Straits, and, you know, after hearing the guitar traffic go by for years, and it's always all the fuzz and the fast and the Les Pauls and the Marshall Stacks, and... Uh, this just stood out to me. He was somebody, I thought, whoa, making news with clean, nice. And he, I learned he did not use pick. I thought, well, that's the same thing. I'm going to think about that. <laughs> I, <didn't, laughs> I thought about it, but I didn't get around to it until the mid-90s, and then I started fooling around with a, without a pick. I traded my SG. I used to use an SG, and... Uh, and I traded that in for a PRS. Somebody was willing to swap it, just to a, a guitar trader, dealer, and he in Memphis, and he said, okay, I'll give you, you sign your SG, and I'll give you a PRS. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for just using that new guitar with the different tones gave me a whole new thing. Well, there's a brand new style going around, hypnotizing the cats in town, living in a walking dream, a pointed toes, and that's what I mean. Well, uh, pointed toes are coming back again. Uh -huh. Pointed toes are coming back again. Everything's all right once I get them on my feet. I said, pointed toes are back again. They're made from a high, a colored dye, a long and lean, narrow and keen, a summer brown, a summer black. When a cat starts a walking, he's easy to track. I said, uh, pointy toes are coming back again. Uh -huh. Pointy toes are coming back again. Everything's all right. Once I get them on my feet, I said, uh, pointy toes are back again. Take it, Dave. Well, there's sharp toes and high heels and buckle on the side. Zip up and lace them up in any old style. I won't have to worry about them stepping on my blues. I'm a keen cutting cat in my winkle picker shoes. I said, uh, a pointy toes are coming back again. Uh -huh, uh -huh. A pointy toes are coming back again. Well, everything's all right once I get them on my feet. I said, pointy toes are back again.
Psychic waste. Well, first of all, it, the, 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 the cording is kind of based on Black Ace. The way that then up to the C, like a modernization of Black Ace stuff, which I like. Um, this is for your blues buffs. Uh, so um, I'd read this article in the Boston Herald by this. Um, he's a guy. He wrote a very interesting thesis called a pagan. A Jew looks at pagan America, <laughs> and it was really, I mean, talk about hard-hitting. It was good. It was a really, really good article. And he was taking little, <laughs> taking a little poke at the environmental concern, you know, that it's a little overblown. And he said, uh, when there's so much psychic waste being dumped in our living rooms through the TV, through uh, a computer, through the games, through the music, through... I mean, he just went down the list, and I thought, whoa. He said, we should be more concerned about the, the junk that's being poured into the minds of the poor kids than, you know, well, the, 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 the rainforest and da-da-da, which is important. But, you know, what is destroying human minds is a lot more important, and so I thought, well, that's a good point, and I made a whole, did, wrote a whole song on it. It's, uh, people have liked it, but, you know, it has its uh, questions. <laughs> I don't mind. On a more serious note. <laughs> It's a contamination that's a waste of our time. What we call recreation is a wrecking our minds from out of California. Come sights and sounds offensive to the taste. Every night in the living room, some jerk is dumping tons of psychic waste. In the movies, what should never be done. Dark torture is groovy as if it's some kind of fun. We want some relaxation. All we get is violence, hate, and fear. We get so used to mutilation that we no longer shoot so sedate.
don't like it, you can simply turn it off. But this crazy kind of logic doesn't hardly cut the stuff. It's like saying to give up water if the taste is hard to bear. Or if there's air pollution, well, then just don't breathe the air. Just to look at this garbage or to tear us apart. All the crime and the carnage, they're feeding our hearts. Let's talk about a world pollution. Let me take this time to state my case. We ought to get more concerned about the global threat of psychic ways. about a world pollution let me take this time to state my case we ought to get more concerned about the global threat of psychic ways talk about a world pollution we ought to get more concerned about psychic ways night in the living rooms some jerk is dumping tons of psychic weed well i was thinking about bitter lemon blues um well it came from a couple of experiences of uh, sitting down with some acquaintances and one of them had sort of a history of, of you know, I don't want to be judgmental, but he had a bit of a history of blaming circumstances, this, this and that, his parents, his, his life, the reason why he couldn't get a job, the reason why everything failed, and everything on everybody else, uh, except number one. And, and of course, everyone was sympathetic, uh, but, in, but after about the, re, you know, the umpteenth rerun, it seemed like people had gotten a bit tired of hearing, well, you know, because nobody really wants to hear a hard luck story more than maybe once or twice, but then, hello, you know, well, you know, I, so I thought, well, there's got to be some, um, you know, just to take a little, you know, just to be a little generous and take a little of the, of the blame. So I thought of writing the song, you know, you, well, you say life's handed you a lemon and it's turned out sour. Uh, well, you know, there's a saying, it says, um, I remember reading it one time, it was quite good, it says, if you've got a lemon, make, make lemonade. And so I thought, oh, that's good, and then I thought of Blind Lemon, Jepson and Blues. It's just this word association. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll take a bit of that style and, and um, write a song about that. Okay, one, two, three, and... <laughs> You've been sitting here, little baby, 
crying by the hour. Our life was handed you a lemon, and it's turned out pretty sour. Well, now I'm coming to the conclusion that the onus is on you to take your shattered dreams and make them all come true. Cause everybody's heard your reasons why you can't quite make the grade. It's time to take that big lemon and squeeze it into sweet lemonade. Well, now some people blame the doctors, some people blame their shrink, some people blame their teachers for how they come to think. Some women, they blame their husbands, some men, they blame their wife. Some children blame their parents for every bad turn in their life. Well, everybody's heard your reason why you can't quite make the grade. It's time to squeeze that bit of lemon and turn it into sweet lemonade. Crying on the shoulders of families, friend and foe, who've taken the time to listen to your sad, sad, sad tale of woe. Now they might sympathize, but you know it won't be long before even your friends get tired of hearing that loser song. Everybody's heard your reason why you can quite make the grade. Why don't you squeeze that bit of lemon and turn it into sweet lemonade? Why don't you take that bit of lemon and squeeze it into sweet lemonade? One of my favorite uh, blues artists was was always Otis Rush, and uh, I especially like that song "Double Trouble." So, uh, and I wanted to do it, but I thought, "Well, it's it's a little bit out of my uh, league." But then we just I just tried it at the Nod Todd and Blues Festival because I had a good little band there to play with, and they knew it. And so, I, well, okay, give it a try, and it went down really good. So, um, it's not a patch on Otis Rush, but I um, just really like the song. I like the intensity of it. I like the, it's a real groan of the blues. <laughs>
You lay awake at night, lost love and just so troubled. It's hard to keep a job, you laid off and having double trouble. When some of this generation is millionaires, it's hard to keep decent clothes to wear. They laugh at you walking when you've got place to go bad luck and trouble have taken you and you've got no money to show hey hey yeah you can make it if you try It's hard to keep these and clothes to wear. When I first heard Elmo, I heard him singing The Sun Is Shining, and uh, then I heard, later heard The Sky Is Crying, and it, both those songs really just did that, you know, especially the way he did it, with that, that slide, you know, just matched the picture of the, it was like a picture in a way. I could really see the, when I heard it, I could see the, the rain and the black sky. And, and it actually inspired that song I did with Fleetwood Mac called Cold Black Night. Uh, and I tried to do a, my own <laughs> version of, of Skies Crying with Cold Black Night. Yeah, I tried. <laughs>
And I wonder, where can she be? I saw my baby one morning And she was walking on down the street It Hurts Me Too is an uh, old song originally done by Tampa Red and done the way I like it by, by Elmore James, of course. And it, it's a, one of those what I call an empathetic blues. It's not so much crying about yourself, but feeling for somebody else. And I always liked it for that reason. Um, no, it speaks for itself. You said you was hurting, almost lost your mind. The ones you love, they treat you so unkind. When things go wrong, go wrong with you, it hurts me too. I feel the pain of your distress I feel the blue of your loneliness When things go wrong, go wrong with you It hurts me too
You said you was hurting me Almost lost your mind The ones you love Treat you so unkind When things go wrong Go wrong with you It hurts me too Well, for one thing, uh, Dr. Brown, it says it, the original Dr. Brown, which I'd recorded with Fleetwood Mac, was a Buster Brown song singing about himself. And uh, I thought, well, I, I would sing Call Me Dr. Brown, but I was, and my name is not Brown. And uh, so I thought, well, if I ever do that song again, I'm going to call it Dr. J for a number of reasons. All you need is 
some sweet love with Dr. J. Well, ask any woman in the neighborhood. Mm, ask any woman in the neighborhood. If Dr. J can't cure you, nobody's gonna do you no good. Shake your money maker, shake your money maker. Come on, shake your money maker, shake your money maker, shake your money maker, and then I got a gal who lives up on a hill. I got a gal who lives up on a hill. Give me everything I want, but just one ten dollar bill. She'll shake that money maker, shake some money maker, shake some money maker, oh shake some money, shake some money maker, and then. She just won't be true. I got a gal, and she just won't be true. Ain't got the good grace to do the one good thing I ask her to. She won't shake that money maker. Won't shake that money maker. She won't roll her, I keep begging. She won't shake her money maker. She won't shake that money maker. She won't. Shake your money maker. Shake your money maker. 
shake your money maker and then I've got a funny story about that one my parents came to visit me one time in Greece and they said oh yes we really we used to enjoy your music this was back in 1980 something and, and they said oh and my dad was sitting there uh, with you know, and there was my mother and some other friends. And my dad said, oh, play that song. We used to really enjoy it, didn't we, Cynthia? Yeah, the Shaky Money Maker song, you know. And so I sang it, you know, just like this, you know, just like this. My dad said, oh. Hmm. I said, if I'd have realized that what, I never realized what the words are actually saying. If I had, I probably wouldn't have asked you to play it. <laughs> A world full of trouble and woe. Well, the line came from a, f a, f a friend of mine, uh, a black friend of mine, who's now in Japan, I think. Uh, and he'd gotten started a song called World Full of Trouble and Woe, and he never finished it. I don't think he did anything with it. He just kind of, oh, you know, oh that's a good idea. I'll just <laughs> take it to a song. And, uh, yeah, it's a social comment. One of them social comments, you know. Uh, on, on the state of the dire state of the world right now. Trouble and woe, trouble everywhere you go. People looking for just a little glimmer of hope. Love is dying in the heart of man. How much more can we stand in this world full of trouble and woe? Thank you. 